Alrighty, but this was not potentially good. We had a potentially another injury. I mean, folks, all these potential injuries that are coming back not serious. Carson Wentz's foot injury doesn't seem that serious. We had um, Chase Claypool like, two nights ago in the pr uh, preseason game where Mason Rudolph threw a pretty great pass. That was the best throw of the entire uh, of the entire preseason game that Mason Rudolph to Chase Claypool throw that Chase Claypool had to die for and he kind of landed on the ball and that was kind of a little bit of an injury scare but it just seemed like he got the wind knocked out of him the Kenny Galladay hamstring that came out to be nothing the Jimmy Smith lower ankle sprain turns out to be nothing and now we had another scare yesterday at Vikings practice Justin Jefferson going up and trying to make a play right here and comes down and lands on his shoulder we can see it here in the video you see him land on that shoulder and then he rolls over and kind of grabs at it you can see he's wincing in pain the man is truly looking hurt and uh, this was potentially really not good but tests are starting to come back from Justin Jefferson's injury yesterday and and they say he went down, suffered a separated shoulder or sprained AC joint. And then they ran further tests. Tests came out as good as possible for Justin Jefferson, who is now considered day to day. All positive news. So once again, another kind of sigh of relief here for Vikings fans. Something that could have been truly detrimental. I mean, Jeff, Justin Jefferson is amazing. He is their tier one wide receiver on the team. Then you have Adam Thielen. And if you bring him out, now Kirk Cousins gets a little bit worse for where we see, you know, Kirk Cousins really only good because you have Stephon Diggs and um, Adam Thielen, and then you lose Stephon Diggs and bring in Justin Jefferson. It's just like, geez, Louise, he's having great pieces, and then you have an amazing running game right behind him in Delvin Cook. So this really would have hurt Kirk Cousins' overall ability to uh, be an efficient, great passer that we've kind of seen. He's kind of, you know, borderline above average game managing quarterback in this league. Put him in the same category as Ryan Tannehill. Put him in the same category as Baker Mayfield. So everything is good here on Justin Jefferson, and we absolutely love it. We want to see this man keep on getting better. We know this man is going into year two here. Let's get up his stats from last season just to remind y'all how great of a rookie year that this man had. Rookie year, 1,400 yards on the dot. Ooh, that's stunting. Isn't that a little stun? No, kind of getting a round number it was his last catch. Hey, I'm just going to catch this last ball for 16 yards because that's going to put me exactly on the dot for 1,400. That's a little bit of a stunt. I love it. <laughs> so nice round 1,400, seven touchdowns. He had 70% catch percentage, which is, which is absolutely great for a rookie year. I mean, that's great for a normal wide receiver for a rookie. That's fantastic. So I, I would like to say I, I would I would bet some solid money that this is one of the, I would say, top five. No, top three. I'm going to go top three. Best catch percentage seasons by a rookie quarterback. Should we try and test this narrative very quickly? Um, let's pull up some of the greats. Let's go to Megatron, Calvin Johnson. I just want to see because that 70% is looking real gosh dang good. Let's just quickly see what we can do for rookie wide receivers. Calvin Johnson, year one, started 10 games, 51%. Year two, 52% catch percentage. Year three, 48% catch percentage. So he, I mean, he never even broke 70% catch percentage, folks. Gosh dang, I know he was getting targeted so much though. Look at this. Oh my god. In 2012, he was targeted 204 times. Oh my god. That's a that's so crazy how many that is. Um usually it's like 150 to like 180 for like solid A1 tier ones. And this man got passed the ball 204 times. He led the league in receptions that year at 112 or 122. It's absolutely and he led the league in uh, receiving yards at 1900. Jeez Louise. But Calvin Johnson never had 70% catch percentage. That's amazing. That man just got inducted into the Hall of Fame. Let's go to Julio Jones. See what he's got up. Rookie year. I think he's catch for 70% a couple of times. Um, year one, 56. Year two, 61. Year three, 69. Never, oh, his last year. Last season, he caught 75% because he only played in nine games. So Justin Jefferson truly is stunting out here. Who else do we do? Um, DeAndre Hopkins? Can we get him up? What's the Andrew Hopkins got going on for catch percentage rookie year? 57. He hit 70 in 2018, and he hit 71 in 2020. 69. He, he, he went uh, three straight years, basically 70% from 2018 to 2020. But once again, didn't do a rookie year. Um, who else do we got? Jeez, Louise, who are we missing? Should we do Stephon Diggs? Former Viking. Maybe it's uh, the Vikings. Maybe all the Vikings wide receivers got it. Um, let's go to Stefan Diggs really quickly. 
Stephon Diggs, year one with the Vikings, 61. Year two, 75%. Love that. Just last season, 76%, the most he's ever had. And look at this. Look at this. Just last season, highest receiver at 127. Highest receiving yards at 1,500. Fantastic. And he still caught 76% catch percentage. So Stephon Diggs did it year two, not quite year one. So very, very solid here by Justin Jefferson. Absolutely fantastic. And truly, the Vikings are going to need this man if they want to have a chance in that division, if they want to have a chance in the NFC just in general. And uh, Justin Jefferson is A-OK, -okay, folks. Huge, great news here. For the Vikings and just Justin Jefferson himself. I mean, you don't want to go from an outstanding rookie year to, you know, a sophomore slump by being injured. How unfortunate would that be? So everything is good. Tests are coming out good as possible for Justin Jefferson.